All right, guys, we've got a new chapter here with a new topic, a very important one called differentiation. In other words, finding the derivative of a function. Major topic in calculus. We'll be spending the next couple months doing this, and let's get to it. <clears throat> so you might remember in the beginning of the course, we talked about what types of problems calculus is trying to solve, and a biggie is something called the tangent line problem. So we, got, we have here three examples of some functions that they're in black. And they have curves and they go in a couple different ways. And we're looking for a line that is tangent to these functions at certain points on the curve. So we call that point P. And a tangent line, by definition, just hits it at one point and that's it. And what we're going to try to do is find the slopes of these lines. But the issue is when we try to find the slope of a line, we really need two points. So how are we going to handle this? Well, our calculus will help us out with this. So, uh, kind of taking a closer look here, let's say we're looking at the specific curve, and let's say we were trying to get the, the slope of the tangent line to this point right here. Okay, well again, in order to find the slope, we would like to take two points. So that's what we're going to try to do first, and by definition, this is the secant line now. Okay, so it's hitting here and here. So it's not the tangent line, it's the secant line, but we'll kind of use this process to eventually get us to the tangent line. Okay, so if we're taking these two points. Uh, what we can do is we can call this uh, this point here. It has an x and y value. Well, the x value we'll call c, and the y value we'll call f of c. And then what we'll do is we'll we'll take this next point over here. So that means we're going to change the x value by a certain amount. We're going to add on a certain amount here, and then the y value will also be changed. So our new x for this point is going to be c plus whatever that delta x is. And then the y value is going to be, we're going to take the c plus delta x, plug it into the function, and what comes out is the y value. So these are our two points now. And if you think about the, the slope, we can take the change in y over the change in x. So the change in y is right here. It's, it's this point, this y value here, minus this one. So that's uh, f of c plus delta x minus f of c. That's our change in y. And then our change in x, it's really just the difference of these two x values, which is delta x. So that turns into this. That is the slope of the secant line. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to use that to approach us getting the tangent line. And we're going to need calculus to get us there because right now we have a delta x in the denominator. And, uh, and we really want, if it's the slope of the tangent line, there'll be no change in x. It's going to be just this point right here, and that, which would mean this is zero. And a zero in the denominator is going to cause a problem. Okay, so. So in comes calculus to help us out here and the limit process. So this is the definition of the derivative of a function. And what we have here is uh, f prime of x. That's the way we'll say that. So that's the derivative. And the way we'll get it is we're going to take the limit of this slope function here as delta x is approaching 0. Okay, so we can't be exactly at 0, but we can approach it. And that will give us a good approximation of the slope. Before we get into the actual math here, let's see a couple other ways we can see derivatives. Uh, so we just saw this is f prime of x, uh, but it might be written in a few other different ways. So we can see dy dx, which is the derivative of y with respect to x. We can consider y prime, d dx of f of x, and then dx y there. Okay, so if we see any one of these, we know we're talking about the derivative. But let's come back to our definition now. And we're going to use this to look at a specific function and define the derivative, which will get us the slope of the tangent line. Okay, and that example is right here. So we're going to find the derivative of this function here, f of x equals x squared plus 3x. And we will use the definition of, a, of the derivative using the limit process to do that. Okay, let's see how this math is going to work. All right. So here is, again, our definition. And this is the example that we're working with. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this here, except we're going to plug in specific values. So what's going to happen is when we do f of x plus delta x, that just means that in here, we're going to put, we're going to replace the x with x plus delta x. Same thing here. And then we'll just subtract this function. And then we'll put it over delta x. Okay, 
Uh, let's, let's see what exactly we mean by that. So let's start getting to work. We have the limit. As delta x approaches zero. And now we're going to, you know, replace this. So we're going to say it's, instead of it being x squared, we're going to say x plus delta x. We're going to square that. And then we're going to add to it 3 times x plus delta x. Okay, that's, that's this part right here. Then we have to subtract the function. So we're just going to plug back in x squared plus 3 x like that and we'll put the whole thing over delta x okay now we're not done because we're well, really two two things going on we have a lot of uh, algebra that we can clean up but we also have a delta x still down the bottom and we're looking for when delta x is approaching zero so right now we still have a zero in the denominator and that's no good. So let's try to clean this up and perhaps we can uh, make it look a lot simpler. So uh, we'll keep going here. We're going to square this x plus delta x. Now you can do that either by using FOIL or the shortcut. Let's go with the shortcut here. That is when we do, uh, we'll square the x plus, then we're going to have two of these. So that's going to be x plus delta x. Uh, I'm sorry, x times delta x. So that's going to be 2x times delta x like that. And then we're going to square that delta x. Okay. Then we have to distribute this 3 through here. So we'll say that that is 3. Uh, we'll distribute it now. So that's going to be 3x plus 3 times delta x. Okay. So we've now kind of, you know, expanded this out gotten rid of some parentheses, and now we'll subtract this. And we'll get rid of those parentheses now. So we're going to say minus uh, x squared, but we also have to subtract the 3x as well. Okay, so that is all up top, still over delta x for now. Now, if you look at this, there are a number of things we can do to make this look a lot simpler. Okay. And we've got this x squared here. Well, we also have a minus x squared here. So that's going to knock those out. Okay. We also have a 3x here and a minus 3x there. So let's knock those out too. And then you look and see what's left. Well, we've got 2x delta x. We've got a delta x squared. And then we have a 3 times delta x all over delta x. So it does seem that there's a delta x that's common to all of them. So let's factor that out. Okay, so if we factor out the delta x from all, from everything that's left, that's going to leave us with, uh, looks like this would just be a 2x now, the delta x is out, um, plus we have delta x squared, but we're going to factor out one of those delta x's, so we have delta x, um, then we have 3 times delta x, but we, we we're factoring out a delta x, so that's just 3. Okay, and then the other stuff got canceled by subtracting each other. Okay, and that is all over delta x. Okay, so now algebraically we can get rid of the delta x like that. And don't forget, we are trying to find, we're, we're saying when the limit of delta x is approaching zero, well, now that we've gotten rid of these delta x's uh, the denominator and it, it canceled out with one numerator, there's still one delta x here, but we're gonna, we can actually plug it in now. So we plug in zero to that delta x that just makes that go away. So that means that we are left with 2x plus 3. Okay, so the derivative now of this function here, if that's f of x, we can say that f prime of x is 2x plus 3. And that might seem a little strange at first because you think, well, I thought we were trying to find the slope of the tangent line. And what's going to happen is this. Uh, this is a parabola, x squared plus 3x. So it's looking like this. And essentially, yeah, we can have tangent lines all, you know, along this function. And they're going to be going in different directions and different uh, 
have different steepnesses at each place. So based upon where we're looking, the slope will change. And that's where this comes in. Okay, so we'll get into actually finding the slopes at different points in our next lesson. But for now, this is how we will find those. So the derivative of this function here, x squared plus 3x, comes down to 2x plus 3. Okay, so we'll get some more practice on this and other examples when we see each other next. And if you have any questions, you can let me know. All right, thanks.